just saying, why do white people think they're so much better than black people? Why? Having to look my kid in the eye and assure her that there is nothing wrong with her because that's the message she's getting, I'm just not okay with it. I'm Jen Hatmaker. I'm married to my husband, Brandon. We've been married for 24 years, and we live just outside of Austin. We have five kids. Our oldest three are biological, and our youngest two, Ben and Remy, are adopted from Ethiopia. Right now, they are 14 and 12. We brought them to America when they were eight and five. We entered not just the adoption conversation, but the race conversation. Naive, inexperienced, and ill-equipped. Once I put myself under really intelligent leadership of people of color, it was devastating to confront my own bias. And we began to discover a racial America that we just had had the luxury to not see before. We didn't have to. Um, we're kind of the center of the bullseye on privilege. We are white, we are straight, we are married, we are pastors, we're upper middle class. So we just had the luxury of not having to care. Uh, I'm 14 years old. My name is uh, Biniam Hatmaker. Uh, I go by Ben. My best friends actually call me Biniam. We do live in like a country area, so there's a lot of white people that say like the N word. So when I hear that, I just I don't really like I don't even like saying the N word. It just doesn't feel right. So whenever I hear other uh, people that say it, I just ask them, please, just don't say it around me because I take that very offensively. Just I really don't like that word. When something like that happens, I usually just I go talk to my parents, just about what is like wrong with this world. One really beautiful and even surprising part of our family story is watching our oldest three biological kids also confront what it means um, to have black siblings, what racism looks like in their teenage culture, in the public school culture, and then to watch them directly and aggressively call it out when they see it has been one of our great joys. Maybe a few years ago, they'd have looked the other way or even participated, but now this has also changed their lives. We're really proud to be able to raise five kids who are all advocates for racial equality and they're not having it. I remember one of our earliest conversations with Remy who is incredibly precious. She's 12 now, she came here when she was five. And I remember her just saying, why do white people think they're so much better than black people, why? Is it something about us? And I just sat there in front of her and cried my eyes out and I said, oh no, 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 you are beautiful and you are important and you are equal to anybody on this earth. I said, this is their problem. If I am unwilling to be an advocate, not just for my son and daughter, but for all black sons and daughters, for all sons of daughters of color, what am I doing here? I have no right to be their mother. We now have learned that we are in charge of the narrative that our kids learn. And we cannot necessarily trust leaders to do the right thing or to say what's true, to do what's just, to call evil, evil, to call racism, racism. This is not the place to be neutral or silent. This is on us at this point um, to come in with clear, clear leadership for the kids that we're raising, the kids that we're influencing, to be an advocate and ally for their peers of color. Hopefully, there are enough of us out here saying unacceptable, unacceptable. By the time my kids are my age, I am hoping that they are living in a different society where really, where racial equality is not a dream, it's not a hope, but it is a reality that they are living in securely and deeply and presently.
Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.